This week on Vision Matter 3D Printing News, we've got 5-axis 3D printing, desktop metal stocks tanking along with their new releases, the Mars rovers, replica SpaceX, Starships, and more. So let's get right into it. First, we've got 5-axis support-free 3D printing, which is finally coming. Pennsylvania State researchers have developed a new process software for support-free 5-axis 3D printing. The program is driven by algorithms designed to automate the slicing process, leveraging the power of 5-axis. Submitted as part of her doctoral program under the supervision of Sanjay Joshi, a professor of industrial engineering, Joshi explains, We want to automate the decision process for manufacturing designs to get to push-button manufacturing. The idea of the software is to make 5-axis AM fully automated without the need for manual work or redesigns of a product. 5-axis machines, unlike their conventional 3-axis counterparts, which is most of the printers we see on the market today, also known as Cartesian robots, these can actually rotate between planes, as well as traveling linearly along the X, Y, and Z planes. As such, the system can change the orientation of the build platform and the part that sits on it. This extra degree of angular freedom allows the nozzle to extrude material underneath overhangs and in other hard-to-reach places, meaning that 5-axis machines can print complex geometries far more than the current machines without the need for support structures. Moving right along, we've got desktop metal once again. After they hit the New York Stock Exchange a few weeks ago, Christmas Eve didn't look too good for the additive manufacturing giant. On the 23rd, they filed a Form S1 prospectus with the Securities and Exchange Commission for the sale of 3 million shares of stock and the issuance of warrants to buy an additional 25 million shares. In total, desktop metal appears to be planning to unleash a tidal wave of 28 million shares on the market at a proposed maximum offering price of just $16.40 per share. The good news about this offering is that the new shares may not appear all at once, as the company says that its plan is to sell the shares only from time to time. But the bad news, according to The Motley Fool, outweighs the good. The 3 million shares up for sale will come from desktop metal insiders who will be cashing out. Now, this won't dilute existing shareholders, but neither will it bring in new cash to fund the company's expansion. In contrast, the 25 million warrants will dilute the shareholders by about 9.9%. Now they will bring in cash, but Desktop Metal notes that the closing sale price of the warrants on December 22nd was only $5.41 and they're ex exercisable at a share price of $11.50, so that's $16.91 total versus the $21.30 that the stock was closing at. Regardless, they are pushing forward and the stock is still probably a great long-term hold. On the same day, they ended up shipping the new P1 systems to Ford and Cetum, uh, the Centre Techniques des Industries Mécaniques in France, which is the first European institution to receive it. And the P50 remains on schedule to begin volume commercial shipments in 2021. Now, serial production of automotive parts is seen as the next area for growth in metal additive manufacturing, and it has been accelerated by this entire year of COVID. To quote, Ford has been active in 3D printing since 1988 with the acquisition of the third commercially available stereolithography or SLA system. We are very excited to be early adopters of the P1, said Cynthia Flanagan, director of the Vehicle and Research and Technology Ford Research and Advanced Engineering Department. Created by leading inventors of binder jetting and single pass inkjet technology, the production system P50 is an industrial manufacturing solution enabling production quantities of up to millions of parts per year at costs which are actually competitive with conventional mass production. Now the single pass jetting technology on the P1 is designed to print each layer in less than three seconds, including the powder deposition, powder compaction, anti-ballistics, binder deposition, and print head cleaning. Now at this rate, the P1 is 10 times faster than standard powder bed fusion systems and fast enough to complete a full build in less than one hour. Now at speeds like that, I think the stocks are going to be fine over the long run. Now I think that that alone is a great reason to smash that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. There's plenty of cutting edge news coming out every week along with a bunch of other content we're making. Uh, plus it really helps the YouTube algorithm and uh, you can let us know why you liked it in the comments below so we can more do more stuff like that. 
And moving right along, up in the sky, of course, we have NASA doing more 3D printing. The Curiosity rover was the first to use 3D printing on the red planet. It landed back in 2012 with a ceramic part inside the rover. NASA has since continued to test 3D printing to make sure the reliability of parts is well understood. Now, using 3D printing has allowed engineers to play with unique designs and traits, such as making hardware lighter, stronger, or more responsive to heat or cold. Uh, currently used as secondary structures, the Perseverance rover's printed parts won't jeopardize the mission if they don't work as planned. So, it, you know, 3D printing is mostly used for instrumentation and tools in these applications, and you can find six other 3D printed parts in an instrument called the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE. Very cool stuff. Lots more on that in the link in the description. Now, in a much more fun version of the space flight, uh, much less serious as well, Fablu recently did a great feature on a spacecraft replica a radio-controlled SpaceX Starship belly flop by Nicholas Rem. Now, this guy's YouTube channel is filled with experiments with VTOL aircraft, biplanes, and other strange drones. Uh, most recently, he decided to replicate SpaceX's highly unusual landing maneuvers. Rem had to custom design the software to properly control his unusual vehicle, but as you'll see in the video, there were plenty of iterations required to work out all the bugs. And he's not finished yet, but it really shows what you can do these days with electronics and custom at-home 3D printing. Now, if you haven't already seen the new SpaceX videos on landing of their rockets, I don't know where you've been, but you should go check those out right now. Now, in a totally different category, we've also got a little bit of 3D printing fashion. As a side note, uh, we just released a new video on food 3D printing in all its forms, so that's another one to check out. But fashion in particular is another one we haven't looked at in a while. From shoes to jewelry, there are a lot of ways to use 3D printing in consumer fashion. But printing an entire outfit is getting more and more possible, and who knows? Maybe we'll just have some 3D printed hoodies for you soon on our website. Definitely subscribe so you can see when we release something cool like that. Uh, definitely some stuff in the works. So last week, the British Fashion Awards chose to celebrate those in the industry who'd created a positive change. Specifically, Rosalia, a Catalan singer who wore a daring 3D printed dress, which uh, is quite interesting looking. We're actually seeing a lot more of this type of thing, and the coolest part is that entire outfits can be 3D printed in a powder bed style printer, and then cleaned off and worn. Valentine's is coming up, so we'll see what's available this coming February, although it might be another year or two before you can get something for your loved one. Meanwhile, 3D printing boats is also becoming a thing. <laughs> in this case, uh, the boat itself was 3D printed in one piece using an industrial robot-based additive manufacturing, working with ABB for several years now. If you aren't familiar, ABB is known for making giant robotic arms. Now this is the latest in a long string of projects that began a few years ago when the entire marine and maritime industries finally began to open up to AM technologies beyond some basic prototyping. We saw several 3D printed boats in 2020, from the Mamba to 3 Dorigo holding records for the largest 3D printed object, which happened to be a boat, along with a few other companies and research institutions doing similar projects. Anyway, the question of the week is this. Are you buying another 3D printer in 2021? Perhaps you're adding to your already existing fleet of printers? If so, are you taking advantage of the tax credits here in the USA? Do you see this being a massive benefit to you, your projects, or your business? Uh, at Vision Miner, we actually specialize in functional 3D printing, especially high-performance plastics like Peak, Ultim, and PPSU, and a lot more. So if you're interested in using functional 3D printing materials in your business, feel free to reach out. We can help you make the right choice for your application. We're doing more and more content every week, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and share this video if you liked it. From our team to yours, we wish you a fantastic 2021. Thanks for watching, have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video. By the way, uh, do you guys miss the news blitz? Leave a comment below if you do, and uh, we'll bring it back if you, if you really want it. Thanks.